For this next video, we're going to jump into full motion analysis, which is actually an add-in called Motion Simulation. Now, it uses the same interface as the animation in the basic motion, but Motion Simulation is an engineering tool. It's a very high-end analysis based on the Atoms solver, and in order to use it, you want to make sure that the Motion add-in is turned on. So go to Tools, Add-ins, and turn on Motion, or just click it here on the Add-ins tab. And what that does is when you go into your motion study, you'll see this third option for motion analysis. Now what I want to do is actually create a, an analysis based on this uh, mate controller. So the mate controller has various positions saved. And what I want to do is have it kind of go through and grab or position at each place uh, according to how that's defined. We'll use the animation wizard. So like mate controller, we're going to bring them in as motors, and we'll start it at zero seconds, and it'll go 10 seconds long. Most of this is all preset just because of the way the mate controller is set up. We can move these keys around a little bit, but for the purpose of demonstration, this will do a really nice job of allowing us to see what it looks like when motors are being used in motion simulation. So I'm going to hit Calculate, and something is going to happen that you've probably seen before if you've ever tried to do this without a lot of preparation. It blows up. Now I'm going to go through a lot of tips and tricks, some troubleshooting steps, um, exactly how to identify exactly what's going on or why something breaks the way it does. But for this one, I already know the answer. There's an unsupported mate type. It's a profile center mate which is a relatively new type of mate and basically the reason that it won't work is because profile center uh, doesn't uh, compute or isn't calculated ca accurately in motion study. So I'm just going to replace it with a traditional two mates, coincident and concentric. And now let's go back into motion study. Let's recalculate and see how we do looking a lot better. We still got kind of a weird flipping around thing here going on. Um, so again, we probably have an unsupported mate type or something like that, but uh, the movement works pretty well. Now we've got, uh, we've got issues with this study. Let's just say that as we dig in deeper and as we look at some of the results, we're going to see some issues. But basically, the motors, this is probably the quickest and easiest way to get into motion simulation. You can graph the information from these motors. So for example, if I wanted to say, I want to look at the waist, weight, waist rotation motor, and I want to create a graph of that, I can look at forces or power. Let's just look at motor torque, the magnitude of the motor torque on that versus time. And we can start to see that um, we've got, let's actually kind of look through here and see. In this section, it's swinging around, but it's swinging around and it's extending, which is probably why you see kind of that consistent amount of force required. Then it stays stationary for a little while. And then you get a spike here where it kicks over to the side, but it stays pretty low uh, force because once it gets going there's very little force required to maintain that motion until you decide to stop it and again the same thing over here where it is kind of a compound motion so this allows you to get some really important information to say okay um, steady state or for spikes or things like that uh, what type of forces what type of capacity what type of rating do I need to get for this particular motor and then you could adjust speeds and you could adjust uh, motion and things like that to try to get a better understanding. Now that's about as simple as it gets as far as setting it up. Let's actually take this back and kind of start a little bit differently. And what I'm going to do is just delete all of those items. And so now we've got it all just kind of starting at basically one point and swinging around on me. This thing has a residual value based on what was created. So let's kind of start this one from scratch. We'll say insert motion study 
And for this one, we're actually going to define each of these motors ourselves. So we'll go to motion analysis. And when you get into motion analysis, these angles here, these, these limit angles or limit distances, these are all going to get replaced by a motor component. So I'm going to suppress them all because they're not going to be needed in this motion study. Now we're going to go up here and we're going to create a new mate or a new set of mates for this assembly. Now a couple things that are happening for the first thing I'm going to look at is when I hit calculate, for some reason it zooms way in on that angle right there, that joint. I don't want it to do that. I want to have full control as I maneuver around and create these mates. So I'm going to disable the playback of view keys so that I can work a little bit easier. The first axis is this rotation axis. So you can see you kind of rotate it right there. That's where I want to add my motor. So I'll click the motor for the component in the direction. I'll click that face. Now if I want it to move relative to another face, I can specify what I want to move relative to. In this case, it doesn't actually matter, but I am going to pick that foot. The reason it doesn't matter is because this component is stationary, it's fixed. If this support was mounted on another device that was you know, rotating, then I would need to do it relative to that foot so that it sort of controls just what's in the purview of that motor. All right, let's do a, just a quick distance from uh, start time of zero, and we'll do the duration time of two seconds. We'll say it goes 90 degrees, and let's just see what that looks like. So it does go 90 degrees, but the inertia causes these other components to kind of go flying around on us. That's okay. We just are focused on this one motor, and if you look at just that one stage, it goes 90 degrees in two seconds. Let's go to the next one. The next motion that I want to control is going to be this piece right here. Now this robot's kind of interesting. It has two motors down here, but only one of them is on this stage. The other one is actually connected in the back to this little offset cam, so it kind of controls the elbow. So the, for the first one, what we'll do is we'll set another motor, which will be this face, and we're relative to this piece. And what we're going to say is, again, we're going to do a distance just for test. We're going to do 90 degrees in five seconds. Let's see if that gets us where we want it to go. seconds. All right. Uh, if I want to change that profile, I can easily come in here and edit that feature. Let's just say it goes in two seconds. We'll do one more. That motor is on this face relative to this face. And again, we'll do a distance. These are just for test. Let's do a two-second, 90-degree thing. Okay, well, it's not realistic, <laughs> but it's a good starting point. So now what we can do is kind of as we uh, start getting all of the uh, positions where we need them to be, then we can start to adjust them. And so let's say, let's just kind of focus back on this one motor. I'm not going to go through the whole setup, but for this one motor, I don't want it to just go 90 degrees in two seconds. I might want it to go back and forth, oscillating, or I might want to do segments. And with segments, basically what you get to do is you put in like a, almost like a curve, a data curve. So you can say starting at zero and then ending at two seconds, I want it to go 30 degrees. From 2 to 3, I want it to stay at 30 degrees. And then from 3 to 4, I want it to go back to 0. And this is the profile that we're going to see. This is the displacement profile, the velocity, the acceleration, and the jerk 
So you're getting kind of a good understanding of what's going to be involved in this movement from a purely translational uh, thing. Now I can come in here and set up different uh, inputs and outputs. So for example, I can say I want it to be a linear um, you know, in, in, income and then a kind of a ease in, ease out, cubic uh, curve on the output and you can kind of see what effect that has on the acceleration, on the jerk and everything else. Now the other options in here, if you go back, let me cancel this out, if you go back and you do data points, segments, expression, servo motor, anything like that, it's all going to take you to the same place. So you've got segments, data points, and expression where you can create these various formulas. Again, I'm not going to go into tremendous detail here. My main goal in these video series is to help you understand what's there, what's possible, and kind of how to approach the topic in general. You've got to decide what your profile looks like and what's an appropriate way to set that up. So it's common to use motors whenever you're doing dealing with a kinematic study. With a dynamic study, you're really looking at the interaction of moving objects. And a lot of times, motion analysis is going to give you much more control than you get in basic motion. So I set this up in basic motion where these blocks just drop and they kind of bounce off each other. If you'll notice, there's almost no friction. These things, uh, it's kind of hard to tell what their mass is. And in fact, you may not even really be able to place a realistic material other than maybe ice that would behave this way. If we switch over to motion analysis, we do get a lot of additional information available. So let's go look at this solid body contact. This is where we can specify materials, friction, restitution coefficients. Um, specifying the materials is kind of the easy way to do it. And then friction and static friction can be turned on or off as needed um, to, to modify things. So let's kind of just see what that one change of simply turning on motion analysis and changing nothing else Let's see what that does to the behavior, and it does affect it. Let me slow it down just a little bit. Oops, five, ten seconds. Let's do that. And you can see that with friction, or with more friction now in the system, we're getting very different results than we did earlier. Seen a little bit of a bounce there. If I change this over to be instead of acrylic, acrylic, we go dry steel on dry steel, we should expect to see a slightly different result. In fact, they almost stack. So, motion simulation can be used in kinematic or dynamic. And in each case, you're going to get a, a series of, of different values and different settings that you can control. In the case of this, these dropping blocks, um, by getting uh, the material specified, we can get a much more realistic representation of what's going on. Now, I'm going to do a whole video just on contacts but a real quick kind of introduction. You've got static friction and dynamic friction, right? Pretty simple and straightforward. But then you've got elastic properties. And this is where your, stiffen or your stiffness or your um, kind of bounciness is going to be in involved. So let's say 0.01 restitution coefficient. And let's just see what that looks like. And you see they basically just kind of push into each other. Oh, I got a little error, but that's okay. They kind of push into each other, but they don't really bounce much. Um, they just kind of run into each other. And this, the error message was likely because I made that too low. If I go in and I make that a lot higher, let's say 0.5, we're going to get a pretty different result. Oh, we'll get another kind of similar result, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to bounce a lot more. And basically, what's causing this or what's going on is at the point of contact simulation is dealing with everything as if it's perfectly rigid and so whenever there's a bounce bounce is caused by some kind of a compression and then re you know release of that compression
And that's all being uh, calculated by the solver. But it's extremely dependent upon the material properties, on the frame rate, and everything else involved in the study. There's a lot of sensitivities there that can cause this to go crazy. And I've seen situations where you'll put a part down, and if you don't have your settings right, it'll look like popcorn popping. The, pops will, the parts will just go flying all over the place. So motion analysis is probably the one that's most fraught with technical challenges, and we're going to dig deeper into each individual type of challenge and how to approach and, and tackle each one in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned.